Welcome to the Adult Fans of Nerf Show. I'm Mr. K. I'm Mr. S. And today we're going to be continuing our elite speculation from a previous episode. Uh, now we have more information, we've seen more releases, so we kind of have an idea of where they're going. Yeah, we've gotten a bit more information on uh, some speculations that we made in our previous episode. We've had a couple of sightings of new Elite Blasters, not much that we have procured or seen ourselves, but um, sightings of them, and yeah, like Mr. K said, we have a better idea of what we think they could be doing to continue the elite goodness. Absolutely. Um, so far, the only newer one we have gotten is the Strife. I like the Strife. I'm a fan of the Strife. I'm a sucker for battery-powered blasters, and I love stuff that's customizable, and this thing is customizable tooth and claw and everything in between. Yes, you can really add things to this uh, like crazy. And uh, in our next episode, we'll be getting on to Elite Accessories a little bit more. But, you know, I mean, even without accessories, this uh, blaster is definitely worth it. Um, you know, I mean, it's really a blaster that nobody asked for, but everybody wants. Yeah, uh, Mr. K had uh, made the comment uh, in a conversation we were having earlier that the Strife was kind of an answer to a question nobody asked, but now that we have our hands on it and have a chance to play with it, um, it's, it's a great testament to how far their flywheel designs have come, and it's just a, it's a fantastic blaster. Absolutely. Um, I mean, it's not without its issues. It does have a firing issue every once in a while, depending on what kind of clip you use um, and you know how strong the spring in the clip is and how full you load it. Sometimes it gets jammed up a little bit, which is sadly a downfall, but you know, I mean, it only happens every once in a while. It happens every once in a while, and you can, you can easily work around it. The problem that I have had with mine, it almost seems that the spring in the clip that came with it is too... Um, has too much power behind it and it's been flattening the darts inside of the clip which makes it almost well not almost not impossible but it makes it difficult for the blaster to fire the darts properly yep and um, there are a couple of unique components inside the, the strife that we can see uh, without even opening it up uh, just looking inside the the dart the gate I'll call it is a lot different from any of the blasters that have come before it um, the closest thing that we've seen to it is the one in the Raven. The sphincter in the Raven. Yes. Yeah. It's it's interesting to see. <coughs> we kind of tried to uh, you know you, if you if you finagle you know taking the clip out whatever you can put your fingers in a certain way to put all of the push all of the clips or the buttons or whatever to make it work without having the clip and darts and stuff inside of it, and to watch that gate kind of work. Um, it's intriguing. I'm not quite sure exactly still how it works, but it does work, and it works pretty well. Yep. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely an interesting step up. It centers the dart in the flywheels and makes it fire a little straighter. Yep. Uh, which is definitely something that's necessary in the Elite line. Definitely. Definitely. We haven't done any hard distance tests on this yet to make sure that it does get the Elite distance. Um, I would, I would like to do that eventually, but it does have plenty of power behind it, and I mean, it gets the job done in spades. Yep, and, and uh, inside the barrel it even is uh, rifled. It is, it, it is rifled, uh, which is the only one that we've seen that isn't rifled so far is the Hailfire, the big dog. So, so yeah, the Strife is the only one we've gotten so far. Um, some of the other ones that people have seen around the country um, have been uh, the uh, fire strike yep. in several WalMarts, uh, the strong uh, arm. strong arm in Toys R Us in Tennessee, as well as the rough cut in the Toys R Us in Tennessee, um, which uh, I went out and looked at Toys R Us, hoping hoping that they had a rough cut. Could not find one at the nearest Toys R Us, so I think I might have to go a little bit farther and search another one because I want that rough cut. The rough cut is so interesting. Now we didn't know hardly anything about the rough cut when we had this when we had this discussion before. Uh, we've since gotten a lot more information. We've seen some pictures of it and this thing is strange. It's the most oddly designed I think uh, blaster in the uh, elite line so far. 
Um, it does fire two darts simultaneously, but it is not a successor to the barrel break. I, I think spiritually it is a successor to the barrel break. You think so? It, it's more of a, a different design. Because if you think about it, both are definitely shotguns. Both are shotguns. The, it, but this see, the barrel break is a break action shotgun. It is. And the strong arm, or the strong arm, the rough cut is, you know, a very unique shotgun. An incredibly unique, you could call it almost a semi-automatic shotgun. It does fire. From what we've heard, you do still have the ability to fire each dart individually, but it will fire them both simultaneously, and it has four chambers of two on top of each other in a line, and without swapping the darts out to have just one set that fires, it'll fire them all sequentially, and we're not exactly sure how it does all of this, but it does it all internally with no batteries or, or any kind of complex priming mechanisms or anything. It just kind of does it on the fly. Yep. And like all manually priming blasters in the Elite line, um, it has slam fire. It has slam um, fire. Does the Retaliator have slam fire? I don't remember. The Retaliator? I don't believe the Retaliator has slam fire. I haven't tried exactly. It does not have slam nope. fire. Nope. Alright, I wasn't sure. I don't remember. So Retaliator, no slam fire. Rough cut, slam fire. Um, and Rampage, of course, slam fire. Obviously. Um, strong, strong arm, arm slam, slam fire. fire. First kind of maverick, pistol -y blaster we've seen that has slam fire. Intrigued about that. I hear that it's supposed to be um, unique to any other slam fire blaster that's come previously. Not sure exactly what that means, but I'm, I'm really like intensely waiting to try it out. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, something w with... The redesigns of blasters like the Fire Strike, the Strong Arm, um, and the Rough Cut, and the Strife, they all have a very sci fi feel to them, even in, in, including the Hailfire. Yep. It, it's a very video game sci fi feel to them. But I'm they still it. have a realistic feel to them, even considering they've, that. I think they've been taking more care in how they design the things, while giving them more of a uh, like you were saying, video game sci-fi feel, but they're not going like out there wonky video game sci-fi. They're they're keeping it more of a a, a tactical streamline uh, feel to the sci-fi, which makes it look and appeal more realistically. That's my thoughts on it, anyway. Yeah, definitely, and it's I'm really happy with it. Yes, I'm. I'm. I'll be honest with you and say that I'm a lot more happy with the redesigns that they've been coming out with for the Elite line than what I've been than I, what, what I was seeing out of the later iterations of the End Strike stuff proper. Uh, the Rough Cut is, uh, I think, going to be a far superior blaster to the Barrel Break, which was uh, by its own rights a unique blaster, but it suffered from a, a ridiculous flaw that I just didn't like. Yeah, yeah. Functionality wise, it was just it just didn't work as well as people would like it. As well as we wanted it to, yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm really loving the Fire Strike. Yes, it, it it definitely has a good look to it. And functionality-wise, you know, having that extra button for the, for the light is yep. something that the original Needed. Nightfinder should have had. Should have had. Now, the only caveat to that is that you can't adjust the or fine tune the the pin the laser on the fire strike. But you know, whatever. It's an it's a new version, and it's going to work as well as Nerf wants it to, and that's good enough for me. Yeah, and you know, I mean, the light on on the Nightfinder was really only so useful. Yeah. But, I mean, the, the the adjustment, anyways. The fine tune, yeah, because I mean. It did move it, but, you know, I mean, you're not... But you're dealing with the random variances in air streamitude of a foam di a dart flying through the air. It's not going to be 100% accurate. You can't really train a sight, a laser sight, for this kind of a weapon. Quote, unquote. Yeah. And um, in the previous version of this, the, the previous Elite Speculation Special... Um, we said that the stru uh, the triad was the successor to the jolt. We were wah, wrong. Wah, wah. We were way wrong. 
we've since seen the Elite Jolt, and we've seen the Triad, and we've seen them kind of side by side in pictures, and they're quite different. The the Triad's basically the the Jolt's older brother. Older brother, or bigger brother, I should say. Younger, bigger brother. Younger, bigger brother. There we go. We'll call it that. It is physically larger than a Jolt by a bit, not a lot, but a bit. Um, it's, it does fire three darts, it does not fire them simultaneously. The cool thing about it is, is it doesn't matter if you have one, two, or three darts in the chambers, it knows which ones you put darts in and it will fire them accordingly. Yep, so you don't have to risk, uh, you know, you put one dart in, you fire it, it's going to fire. You don't have to worry about it not firing or, or, or firing, firing poorly. Wrong, firing poorly, firing from the wrong chamber damaging from dry fire, stuff like that, you don't got to worry about it. No, it, it, it'll do it all for you. you. Just put the darts in and away you go. Yep, and the Jolt is coming out um, in, in the Elite version. It's uh, slightly different, more, more so just on the end of the barrel yeah. than anything. A minor uh, cosmetic. Elite colors. Change. Other than that, it's pretty much the same Jolt. I'm pretty sure it's going to have Elite ranges. I mean, I don't know how much they can do to it to really make it better, but they must have done something. Apparently, they've been able to do with everything else. Well, you know, work I... Work their nerf magic. Work their nerf magic. And I, I really can't wait till all of these things come out so we can get them all and be able to do just one big, huge range test and see exactly how true they've been keeping to their word with that distance mark. Yep. Um, yeah, and, and uh, the other one that we've seen or heard of is the new Elite Raven. And I'm excited about the Raven uh, primarily because um, while the original Raven was, is great, there's room for improvement. I mean, it was just an end strike flywheel blaster, but the next right. one is an Elite and strike and flywheel elite, blaster. And, and I'm, I'm still myself wondering how they can make the flywheels better to give it the distance and blah 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 but again that's a distance test episode for later. I love the Raven, I love the design of it, I love the feel of it. It's coming out in blue. It's coming so out it's going to match everything Yay, else which yeah. is one of the biggest things that I had a problem with in the Raven was that it didn't match anything. There was no other blaster in the entire Nerf history that had the accessories that matched it. Right. It was it was unique unto itself, but the, that was the that was the downfall of the of the Firefly Tech series is that they 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 focused on doing this, and it was only a two blaster line, and they didn't have to give it its unique color scheme because all of the Firefly technology was really in the clip. It didn't really have much of anything to do with the blaster. Um, but the but the Ravens coming out in the elite colors will have more color uniformity with the accessories, and it's going to be great. Absolutely. Um, and of course, the other one is the stockade, yeah. um, the elite version of barricade. Yep. No, not much new news on that one. It's still a UK thing. There's uh, somebody said that they saw. Um, saw one come to the states or saw the states they managed version to, of they it. They managed to get a hold of the states version somehow through whatever company they work at. Um, I read something on it online and saw a picture of it and it was the uh, American version because it had the little 75 foot uh, range sticker, sticker and it was the box was wholly in English unlike the UK or um, uh, Australian Oceana edition, uh, which are in usually have multitude of languages on the box. I haven't even seen the box for it, so I couldn't tell you. Um, the only other one that we really have no idea about is the Phantom blaster known as the incinerator. The incinerator. We've only heard about this through a, like a small blurb in an article or... It was, it was, uh, somebody found it somewhere in a list of prices for blasters early on, or a little while ago, uh, when we were learning more about what was coming out in the Elite line. And it seems to have a similar price point to the Nightfinder. And in our previous episode, we said, oh, this is going to be the Elite Nightfinder. But 
for some reason we managed to forget entirely about the fire strike. Yeah, so uh, not much is known at all. It could, I'm thinking maybe with that same price point, maybe we could be getting an elite, um, like I just totally spaced on the name <laughs> of the blaster that I was thinking of. Um, pistol, our favorite pistol. Oh, the Scout. Scout, yeah. The incinerator could yes. potentially be an elite Scout. That is a very good point. It, it would probably be about the same price point. When you when, when you break it down. Oh, yeah. we can't forget about the Elite Reflex. The re Elite Reflex, indeed. We've um, seen it available on Amazon. It's, you know, it's the Reflex. There's yeah. not much to say about it. They changed maybe a couple of little things about it. Gave it the Elite paint job, but uh, it's the Reflex. Yep. Um, I'm not too excited about it. Of course, I'm going to buy it because I'm a collector. But it's just... I think the reflex has kind of had its day. The reflex wasn't an imp wasn't an impressive blaster at all. It was cool because you could get it in that uh, six pack party pack that Toys R Us had, and it was great for kids. Um, if anything, I would get the elite reflex to replace the reflexes that I currently have. Because let's face it, if once you go elite, you can't go back. But um, other than that, I mean, it's just a standard pea shooter like every other pea shooter that's come before it. Yeah, and what it, I mean, it, it looks okay, but really, what I really don't like about it is the miniature handle. It's, you know, it's got enough of a handle for you to wrap like one finger around it and then you're like, okay, what do I do with the rest of these digits? But um, again, I, I think that that's primarily just a design feature to keep it kind of for kids. Yeah. So, I mean, that's really all we know about from the Elite line. Uh, so far, um, things that could be coming out in the future, um, we're not sure about. We haven't heard anything other than what we've already mentioned. But um, like we said, in our, or like we've gone on in the previous speculation episode, we'd like to speculate a little bit about what could be coming out for blasters that haven't been announced yet. Right, we've been kind of racking our brain trying to think of what for the Elite line could they maybe do for their next September special next year. We got the Hailfire this year to kind of usher in the Elite line. Um, where could they go from there? Um, and we've, we would really like to see, you know, with the 75 foot distance that they've been advertising and we've been, you know, trying to get uh, with the Elite line, we, it seems kind of like a high range sniper type thing. Thing. And we haven't seen a big long rifle come out for the line yet. Uh, we would really, really like to see something long strike esque, or maybe something. I would like to see something using, if not that same barrel extension, something that's very similarly designed because that thing is just awesome. And to have it in the Elite Blue would be great for all of the other awesome Elite Blasters, like Strife over there, I think would benefit greatly from that kind of barrel extension. Yep, definitely. I think that uh, definitely one of the best things that Nerf did has decided to do with the Elite line is make them all the same color scheme. Yes, yeah, like with the the Elite or the, with the End Strike line, you had the blue, you had the yellow, and yeah, there was a lot of threw random shit out there like the green. <sighs> yeah, so color uniformity is awesome. It makes customization cool without having to do paint mods or whatever so something I really think if not a I don't know what do you do you really think a battery powered sniper rifle would be able to fit into the elite line I'm I'm honestly not thinking too much in the way of a battery powered sniper rifle I'm thinking more so um, a bigger Batter sniper rifle. Bigger batter sniper I'm, rifle. I, I'm thinking long strike meets stampede, but in the way that the stampede is a big badass blaster. Uh, you know, I mean, really, the way the stampede is now is kind of moving onto the wayside. You know, stampedes are starting to move off the of shelves and stuff, and make making way for the other blasters in the elite lines. So, I mean. Really, if they, if they, I'm thinking they might come out with an Elite Stampede on its own, maybe with some new accessories or whatever, but 
I'm thinking that if they do come out with an elite long strike, it's going to be something entirely different from what they've done before. I'm thinking, you know, um, I'm honestly not too familiar myself with sniper rifles in the real world, but I, I'm fairly sure that there's there's a lower end sniper rifle and then there's the big bad boy sniper rifle. And I think that's what, I think the long strike is a smaller um, sniper rifle, you know, it, it's it's um, not, not necessarily a lesser sniper rifle, but it's smaller than what I think an elite sniper rifle would be. Okay, so you think maybe like a like a just a straight up redeco of the long strike just to get it into the elite line. I'd like to see that personally. What I would like to see maybe as kind of a big dog like you were talking about would maybe be kind of like a long strike meets stampede with hailfire internals with the super plunger. Super plunger. Get away from flywheel for it. A super plunger would be would be nice, but I don't think you can really do that if you don't use flywheels. And I think that a flywheel blaster would be at a disadvantage for a sniper rifle. You think so? Because, because of it the makes noise. noise. And not only that it makes noise, I think that straight up plungers are better than uh, flywheels. Okay. Um, they don't have the speed that the flywheels have. But I think that they're capable of more power. Capable of more power, maybe more reliable distance? Yeah. Okay. So we're still not sure what exactly. We, we would like to see a, some, some bigger, badder blasters come down the pipe. Probably something battery operated, maybe not. We don't really know. We're still speculating. And that's, that's really all the speculation that we have. I mean, looking forward in 2013, we really see our plate pretty full already with all the blasters that they're scheduling to come out that we already know about. Yeah. You know, and I would be willing, willing to bet that it's probably going to be the same story as last year in terms of how they're going to schedule blasters when it comes around September. Yeah. I think that they'll probably do two special blasters in August and then the real big boy big in boy. September. Yeah. Probably we may that may they may be holding out on the diatron, the new uh, double barrel. I, I think the I, I, I think the diatron is probably going to come out early. You think it's going to be early? You don't think they're going to hold off on no, that? No, I don't like with the pyrogon. I really don't think so cuz we're already seeing the rough cut. And since we're already seeing the rough cut, I'm thinking it's going to come out or the the full release date you know, when we when everybody sees it finally in stores, I think it's going to be in the first quarter of 2013. 2013? Okay. Because, I mean, the, the Diatron and the Rough Cut are basically supposed to be two rival blasters, rival blasters in the Vortex and Elite lines. I wish they would do, I, I want them to keep doing more with the with the Vortex line. We haven't seen anything new in the Vortex since the Pyragon, and while the Elite is awesome, it would be refreshing to see maybe a little bit more out of the, the Vortex line, personally. I love the new paint job. I would almost like to see, see them go back and recolor all of the old uh, Vortex blasters and bring them in with this new fresh paint job. Yes, the Pyragon um, really has a good color scheme. Um, I, I think, honestly, I think it's just took them a, taken them a while to discover what people like in terms of color scheme. You know? I think so. I think so. And at first glance, we liked the green and gray of the old Vortex because it was very alien. It really fit into the sci-fi motif thing, made it feel like a, good, a really good rival to the end strike. But now we want to see a rival to the elite. And I think they can really do that if they push through with new Vortex stuff in this new paint job. Absolutely. So more speculations, more stuff coming down the pipe. We'll catch you on the flip side.